Welcome back to our YouTube channel, where we delve into various networking topics and provide detailed step-by-step -step tutorials. In today's video, we will guide you through the process of downloading and installing PFSense on VirtualBox. We'll then demonstrate how to integrate this PFSense machine into GNS3 and create a basic network using it. Additionally, we'll cover configuring the interfaces of the PFSense machine, setting up a DHCP server, and testing the network configuration with a small network. Finally, we'll show you how to access PFSense from a Windows 10 machine. Let's dive right in. Step 1, Downloading and Installing PFSense on VirtualBox To begin, you'll need to download PFSense, which you can find on the official PFSense website. Once downloaded, open VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. Adjust the settings according to your requirements, such as memory and storage allocation. After setting up the virtual machine, choose the downloaded PFSense ISO file as the bootable medium. Start the virtual machine, and the PFSense installation process will commence. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. Once the installation is finished, PFSense will reboot. Step 2, adding the PFSense machine to the GNS3. Now let's integrate the PFSense machine into GNS3, a network simulation software. Launch GNS3 and open the project you want to add PFSense to or create a new project.
In GNS3, go to Edit. Preferences. VirtualBox and make sure the VirtualBox path is correctly configured. If not, browse and set the correct path to the VirtualBox installation folder. Select the PFSense virtual machine you created in VirtualBox and apply the necessary settings. You can also customize network adapters and other settings to suit your needs. Once the node configuration is complete, save the project. Step 3. Creating a simple network in GNS3. Now that we have the PFSense machine integrated into GNS3, let's construct a basic network topology. Add two VPCS, Virtual PC Simulator nodes and a Windows 10 node to the project canvas. Connect the nodes together using Ethernet links. You can configure the links by right-clicking on them and selecting Configure. Choose the appropriate interfaces. Step 4. Configuring PFSense Interfaces. Then let's configure the interfaces of the PFSense machine. Start the PFSense machine in GNS3 and access it through the console or using the remote desktop connection feature. In the PFSense console, navigate to the interface configuration. Designate M0 as WAN interface and M1 as LAN interface. Configure the WAN interface with a random DHCP IP address and save settings. Now configure the LAN interface. Set the 192.168.1.1 LAN IP address with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Enable the DHCP server and specify the IP address range to assign to connected devices, such as 192.168.1.2 to 192.168.1.100. Once the interface configuration is complete, save the changes and exit the PFSense console. Step 5. Testing the configuration. It's time to test our network configuration. Start all the nodes in GNS3 and verify their connectivity. Check if the VPCS machine receives an IP address from the DHCP PFSense server. Opens the VPCS machine then type DHCP to get an address and it shows that our server is working properly. Check if the Windows 10 machine receives an IP address from the PFSense DHCP server. Open the command prompt on the Windows 10 machine and use the IP protocol configuration command to check the assigned IP address. Additionally, you can ping the PFSense LAN interface IP address 192.168.1.1 from both nodes VPCS and Windows 10 to ensure connectivity. Step 6. Accessing PFSense from Windows 10. Lastly, let's see how we can access PFSense from the Windows 10 machine. 
Open a web browser on the Windows 10 machine and enter the PFSense LAN IP address 192.168.1.1 in the address bar. You should now see the PFSense web interface, where you can further configure and manage your network. Congratulations! You have successfully downloaded and installed PFSense on VirtualBox, added it to GNS3, created a simple network, configured the PFSense interfaces, tested the configuration, and accessed PFSense from a Windows 10 machine. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions or need further assistance, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more informative tutorials. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.